I know it was my pastor turning around looking at me, but it wasn't him. The way he turned around and he looked at me. Oh, uh, I see you. It was truly Jesus in that Jamaican restaurant, the smell of jerk chicken in the background. <laughs> I literally saw, felt like I saw the face of God just wow. looking at me, saying very clearly, I see you. I gave my life to Christ at a Jamaican restaurant. And it's so kind of God because I love food. He created food. So we kind of just connected <laughs> for the first time at a Jamaican restaurant. And um, to give you a little bit of background, um, I, um, my dad had died. It was the season my dad had died. And shortly after, I met the man of my dreams time. And then he gets killed and um, he was murdered. Oh. And so yeah, that's a big one. Wow. That's the truth, like, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so just imagine this young girl, very young, mm. and just experiencing all of this death all at once. And um, I know we're on TV, but I was just super angry mm. at God, super mad at him. How could he? Because especially when I found out that my husband had been shot, he happened to be at the right place at just the wrong time. Right. It was just crazy. I'm praying all these different prayers and just everything that I knew kind of growing up, just praying them, just praying, God, just, I know you can, I know you will, God, I know you care, all these different things, mm -hmm. really believing with all gusto, God, help, please help. And um, he still died. So it was an interesting place, very upset, very isolated. I mean, wanting to commit suicide, I'm like, he was a good one, I was not, so why? Yeah. Why take him, why not me, you know? all these different things. And mm. I stumbled upon church because I not just go to church after a year, just go to church. So I went to mm -hmm. local church and I remember the pastor was preaching. Uh, it was Luke seven about the widow burying her only son. Mm. And scripture says that Jesus, he saw her and he had compassion on her. And I said, wow, God, if you could only see me mm -hmm. and where I am, then maybe, uh, maybe I absolutely will totally give you my life. I would totally trust you if you could just see me. Because right now in all of this, you definitely don't see me. Mm -hmm. Went about my life, went to the Jamaican restaurant. And so I'm in the line. It's a fast, casual line. And there are several people um, in the line. And I see the, the head of my pastor at the time, church that I would frequent every now and then. Um, and I had always kind of wanted to talk to the pastor, but you know, they're busy, all the excuses that you make, like they got a lot going on and it was a pretty large church and pretty incredible, but I just, I didn't know what to say. I'm mad at God. Like, what are you going to tell me at this time? So I see the back of my pastor. I'm like, oh my gosh, maybe I should talk to him, but there's so many people in line and I see him turn around. Y'all, I know it was my pastor turning around, looking at me, but it wasn't him. The way he turned around and he looked at me. Oh, I see you. It was truly Jesus in that Jamaican restaurant, the smell of jerk chicken in the background. <laughs> I literally saw, felt like I saw the face of God just wow. looking at me, saying very clearly, I see you. Mm. And I mm. immediately just, I freeze and I'm shaking and he sees me like, what, what, what's going on? So he awkwardly kind of comes to me, gives me like a father, like, he's like, are you, oh, are you okay? I said, you're pastor, so-and-so. And so much has this happened in my life. And dad died, my husband died. And I was so mad, but I feel as if God is saying for the first time ever that I see you. And I, I and if he sees me, then I got, then that means he's real. And if he's real, that means I have to trust him. And oh my gosh, and I'm crying and sobbing. He's like, what is going on? And he gives me a hug, gives me someone to kind of connect with at the church and all of that. And my faith journey from then, I mean, it was just hot fire. I mean, the Lord himself had seen me. Wow. So I was reading, indulging in the word, like started this Bible study. I mean, doing all the things. I started, I mean, full on at the church, like at the church all the time. When I say all the time, all <laughs> the time. I Some time passed and I met this absolutely amazing man. I'm so, for anyone that's experienced loss, God redeems. Mm -hmm. And to levels that we never thought possible. So I meet this incredible, amazing man. I'm Stephen, we get married, a little bit later. I'm still on fire, just still, just overwhelmed with the goodness of God. 
there as experiencing so much, but here he is just ready to speak to me. And I just like, oh my goodness, I want to know you. The power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your suffering. I just want to know you. And he was like, yeah. And I felt like he said, yeah, get to know me. I mean, I'm fasting. I'm doing 40 day fast and another 40 day fast. I mean, Esther fast was a seven day fast, no food, no anything. I mean, all wow. these ridiculous things because I wanted to know him. Wow. Mm. The man who saw me, when I talk, when you when I said I wanted to commit suicide, hear me, I wanted to commit suicide. I took the pills to commit suicide, mm. but for whatever reason, I still lived. And I believe he was literally guarding my body, keeping me alive. I wanted to know him. Yeah. I wanted to know him. And he started to talk to me all the time. You get words of knowledge. I worked as a, I was a nurse in the hospital, like all these different things, like miracles, like just sparking out. I mean, it was just crazy. I'm like, yeah, God is good. He's awesome. And he is. And instead of a little bit of time, you know, you have kids. You have kids. <laughs> you keep having kids. <laughs> you keep having kids. You have one, you have two, you have more responsibilities, you're in ministry, all these different things. And I just noticed after a while, I just become a little bit, huh. Mm -hmm. It wasn't as exciting as it yeah. once was. I mean, I remember the first time I gave an offering to like church building and stuff like that. I'm like, God, I don't know if I can, but I think this is the number you're giving me. I'm gonna do it. And Checks come in the mail. I mean, it was just amazing things. Mm -hmm. And again, after a while, it just, it wasn't like it was before. Mm -hmm. And I insert the new year in our church. We have this discipline. What we do is that we fast for 21 days yeah. of mm -hmm. prayer and fasting. And I remember, God, I love food. You know that. So mm -hmm. me going to that food mm -hmm. and connecting with you, I mean, this is a big deal. Mm -hmm. It used to be easier for me, but after a while, it just became very difficult. Yeah. And so I want to say that God started to speak to me day one. I didn't hear it. Day two, didn't hear it. Day three, didn't hear it. I think it was like the second week. I finally, my heart was still enough to be able to hear. And I really felt the Lord saying, Zai, where are you? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't, I, I don't. It's like, no, where are you? Mm -hmm. Like there's, I want you to know where you are because there's somewhere that I want to take you this year. But I, I want to take you there, but you have to be in a certain place to go there. Mm -hmm. And where, like, where are you? Are you, you're doing all the things. It's kind of like you've forgotten, like, your first love. Yeah. yeah. A lot of what I, and I, I sobbed, I repented. I'm like, God, I've been, mm -hmm. when I first gave my life to you, like, it was just so exciting. It was exciting to be in your presence. It was exciting to pray. It was exciting to fast. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a sacrifice. It was exciting. I wanted to know you. And after I felt like I've known you for a little bit of time, I've kind of lost the honor and the awe. Mm. And God, I'm so sorry. I'm doing the things, but mm. I'm just not here. And from then on, like he started to just unpack a lot of different things. And I tell you that time of prayer and fasting, it just brought such growth, such development mm. to me. I started to really like know him again. Not that I hadn't known him, but it just became, there's such a freshness that happened in my life. And I know prayer and fasting is not everyone's thing. I know some Christians actually, they just don't fast. It's not their thing. But for me, it's one of the things that every now and when I feel myself in a slump and there's no sin or anything, you're just like, a, yeah, you're going through your life and it's just like, Egh. and I don't think God wants us to have an mm -hmm. life, but saying yes to God that gets you silent enough mm -hmm. and in a space that he can talk to you. And if he can talk to you, and if you have the heart to receive, then he can start to fast for, he'll start to give you plans. You start to give people that he wants you to connect with. He'll start to do all the things, mm -hmm. but it's prioritizing that. Mm -hmm. And I think for some people, they're waiting for something crazy to happen before they go after God. And mm -hmm. you don't need something crazy. It's a new year. Yeah. And I think there's yes. fresh grace. And I think truly now more than ever, I think God wants to speak to us. And I dare say that many of us, we're at a, uh, it's a new year, mm -hmm. but nah. Or, you know, that was before when I was in my 20s, when mm -hmm. it used to be really exciting. I'm in my 50s now and, you know, I already know him. Yes, but there's still so many. Yes. There's still so much more to him. And like Zai said, the, the fact that we know we're seen. Oh, I know. And being seen by God huge. is such, it's so huge. And I just think of all the people watching, just if they mm -hmm. could hear and know that yeah. they are seen by the living God. 
Yeah. It changed your whole life. It does. I think, I mean, we're grappling for so much. Like, does my boss see me? Mm -hmm. Does my spouse see me? Mm -hmm. Do my kids even care about all the stuff that I'm mm -hmm. doing? Do they see me? Do my friends see? I'm always the one to plan all the things. No one really cares about all the things that I do. Am I seen? Am I seen? And I think um, just when you spend time with him and you're praying and you really quiet yourself, you know that his eyes are on you. Mm -hmm. And when you sense his eyes on you, everything changes. Yeah. There's a boldness that's inside of you. There's a peace. There's a joy that's inside of you. And I, and I just think a lot of the things that a lot of the mental things, of course, some of them are really real and all of that, but I think a lot of the struggles that we have, I think that it's because we've just lost track of him. Yeah. And we're doing, you know, all the things we're serving in our churches, we're doing for someone else to say, well done, you know, right. and for something else, yeah. like it's, it's, it's for Jesus. But when you take the, and it's when you really know God, I'm doing this onto you and you take those moments and you lock eyes on him and you see that he's not like trying to look behind you to someone else that, you know, does this and you feel like he's yeah. looking at you. And sometimes some, you're standing outside of this, you're looking online and you're like, oh, that sounds so great for her. She had this great experience with God. And all I keep hearing is I want to have that experience with every single one. Absolutely. You know, like he, mm. it's great to hear that, like God is with you. He's not going to have abandoned or evicted over you. I think it's necessary to hear that from someone else to start to bring this curiosity. Be, like who, who is this guy, mm -hmm. you know? Because I think that so everyone's left me. So who is this guy that doesn't want to leave me or abandon I think it's great to hear that from someone else. And my hope and my prayer is that there it's it's more than curiosity, that it actually causes us to turn and to look, you know, like these burning bush type experiences and say like, wait, who is, because I think God wants to have these experiences Absolutely. with each and every one of us. And I think it's our responsibility Absolutely. to just make the time. Yeah. It's not enough to say, I don't like my life and yeah. God's not doing anything. He's not building anything. And it's just like, well, he has great plans. He does, and he wants to tell them to you yeah. specifically. And you are equipped. You're more than able. But if we don't create Give our those attention, mm -hmm. we, oh, magnify the yeah. Lord. Come on. And and the thing to remember there too is we talk about it was by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimonies. Yes. What what we've experienced that we're hoping those that are watching can experience is we come to Him, we come before Him, we can pursue Him. But I tell you, it is the work of the Holy Spirit. Yes, it is. When we meet with him, totally. he does the supernatural. Yes, he does. So when you're saying, I want everyone to know him, I want everyone, I want to challenge everybody watching. Yeah. Spend five minutes saying to the hardest place in your life, God, where were you in that moment? Hmm. And just sit there and ask him, where yeah. were you in that moment that was yeah. hard? And if you will allow your heart to, to hear the still small voice of the Holy Spirit, I believe some things will begin breaking off Amen. of you because you will encounter yeah. a Jesus that you've never maybe encountered before. Yeah. You will have a, a time with him because it is his job to come in and bring peace. You can't, you can't manufacture yeah. peace. He brings the peace. Amen. His Holy Spirit brings the comfort. Yeah. His Holy Spirit brings the wisdom. Yeah. So when you don't know what to do, ask him but it requires us getting still in his presence yeah. and letting him then yeah. do all the revealing, all the work. Amen. Yeah. God is building a home. He's using all of us, irrespective of how we got here in what he is building. He used the apostles and the prophets for the foundation. Oh. Now he's using you, yep. fitting you in brick by brick, mm. stone by stone, with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone that holds all the parts together. Beautiful. We see it taking shape every day after day. A holy temple built by God, all of us built into it. A temple in which God is quite at home. Come on. Oh, Amen. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? I love yes. that. Just that absolutely. Is Thank you, Jean Peterson, for being yeah. so Amen. used by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. He's Happy New Year, home. everybody. Yes. Happy New Year. I think there's grace to just to, 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 
to, to be with God. I think some of us, we're still so busy and we still have yeah. all the excuses, but I just sense the supernatural grace yeah, and the beginning yeah. of this new year mm. to get to know as yes. God. I think he has great plans Amen. for us. I think he wants to build great lives so we can testify just to this world. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. And it's because of you that partner with us that this ministry continues. God bless you.